Hey, it's great to see you all. I hope you had a splendid, a splendiferous meditation. Um, I got what five minutes, six minutes. I call this six minute Dharma talk every morning. So I got six minutes to explain everything. I'm going for it this week, you guys. I thought my Christmas present to you would be to as effectively as I can currently explain uh, the nature of reality. <laughs> That's all. And I've already used up 45 seconds. But anyway, let's start at the start and we'll just work on it all week long. And the intention is to give you an epiphany and revelation. You, you already know this, by the way, so it's going to be easy to get it. So if you look around at all the stuff in your living room or whichever room you're in, it's it's uh, it's important to remember that's all made of energy, right? It's like, there's no doubt about it. It's a scientific fact. Einstein came along and said, energy and matter are the same thing. So if you look at the, I'm looking at my piano and my piano sure looks like a big block of stuff, but it's just energy that's currently shaped into a piano. Now, the energy that's going into making up that piano, that energy is inexhaustible. It's the first law of thermodynamics. There's no loss or gain of energy in the universe. It remains constant. What there is, is the second law of thermodynamics, which is entropy. It's always shifting and changing into something else. So the energy that used to make that piano, God only knows what it used to make, and God only knows what it will make, because... In 500 years, it's unlikely that the energy that goes into making that piano is still going to be used to make a piano. So energy is always being shaped into new things. Isn't that remarkable and wonderful? There's no stagnation or stasis in this universe. It's always evolving and it's always finding new and brighter and more inner ways, interesting ways to express itself. So if energy is always shaping itself into different things, that's a fact. There's no doubt about that. The question is, as you look around your life at the stuff, the people, places, and things, who, exa who exactly is shaping that into what you're seeing? And the great spiritual truth and the great spiritual law is you are the one who is shaping the reality that you're looking at. Every single spiritual master, spiritual tradition, spiritual truth teaching tells us at the deepest possible level and tries to wake us up to the fact that the reality that we're living is being shaped by us and through us. And how exactly do we do that? Tune in tomorrow. Just kidding. I still got a minute. So um, the way that you shape what you're looking at is by attention. Somebody shaped the energy into a piano by giving it attention and a plan and then follow through. This is the case with everything that we're looking at. So in effect, if the life that we're looking out onto, the movie that we're watching, you're watching your movie, I'm watching my movie, I'm watching Greg World all the time, you're watching your world all the time. What's really truly remarkable and amazing and miraculous is that our individual movies are part of a collective movie. So hats off to the inventor of that astonishing universe that we live in, but I digress. The movie that you're watching is being shaped by the attention that you give. If we're looking at a beautiful, wonderful, harmonious, prosperous, thriving, flourishing movie, then that's the sort of attention. That's the way that we shape this energy, this prana, this chi that I'm talking about. If we're looking at difficulty, depression, sadness, limitation, restriction, poverty, disease of some sort, well, that's how we're shaping it. It's the good news and the bad news. If you like it, you can say, I cooperatively co-created that. If it looks crappy, we can say, you know what? That's what I did, but I can clean it up. How do we clean it up? By paying attention to the things that we love and acting and behaving in accord with that. And how do we get rid of the things that we don't like? By letting go of struggle and resisting against it. And that's exactly the opposite of what most humans do. We try to get rid of things by pushing, resisting, fighting, and struggling against it. But we're learning. We're in spiritual kindergarten, and we're going to graduate to the first grade this week. And I'm looking forward to it myself, because the most interesting adventure of life is to pause for a moment and realize you are the shaper and the molder of your own reality. 
in the absence of that realization, life is a landslide of uncontrolled circumstances. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. But when you get a hold of this principle, this truth, and it's not my truth, it's the truth delivered by every spiritual master and truth teaching, then we can begin to get our hands in the clay of life and shape lives that are the glory that they were meant to be. We did it. Now I'm going to elaborate on this all week long and attempt to enthrall and enthuse you with this spectacular information. Have a beautiful day.